Hi everyone! Today we're going to be looking at the app So World. This can be found in the Google Play Store and on the App Store if you happen to be an Apple user. And this is made by a company called View. And I'm going to show you here a picture of View. This is what you will find if you will find if you look for this in the Google Play Store. And now we're going to go ahead and open the app. And once you get open the app, you'll get this screen. Go ahead and hit play. And then it lets you look at the eukaryotic cell as a whole. Now, as you know, eukaryotic cells are found in plants, animals, including humans, and fungi. And I want you to notice that this cell is not a plant cell because it lacks a cell wall. All right, next we're going to look at the cell membrane. Notice its fluid-like structure. This allows it to alter its shape as needed. But also notice how it envelops the whole cell in all three dimensions. This protects the inside of the cell, the cytoplasm, and the organelles from the outside of the cell. And as you know, this also protects the concentration balances inside the cell to make sure that they are within limits to perform the functions as needed. Now I'm going to pull up a close-up of the phospholipid bilayer for you to look at. And here we go. Here's a diagram of the phospholipid bilayer. Notice how the hydrophilic heads are oriented outward intracellularly and extracellularly and the hydrophobic tails are towards the middle of the membrane where there will be no water. Next we're going to take a look at the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is a thick fluid-like substance that contains water, proteins, and ions. Notice how it is in the entirety of the cell going around all the organelles. It basically fills it up like a pool and this is also used to maintain gradients that allow metabolic processes to continue. Next we're going to talk about the nucleus. The nucleus is a central organelle in the cell and it is considered the control house of the cell. It contains the DNA that lets the cell run and controls basically everything that happens inside the cell. And now we're going to try to look at the membrane. Nope, no, that's not it. Come on, there we go. The nuclear membrane is what surrounds the nucleus and protects it from everything outside of the cell. The cytoplasm is very dangerous and destructive towards DNA so it's better to keep it secluded from the DNA and it also prevents any degradation to occur. Now we're going to take a look at the nuclear pores. Maybe, yep, there we go. Alright, the nuclear pores. So these are the pores that allow things in and out of the cell. It allows proteins, ions, and water in and out of the cell. It also allows RNA, once transcribed, to come out of the cell to go out and produce proteins. Next, we're going to take a look at the chromosomes. The chromosomes are located inside the nucleus, and they are the DN compact form of DNA sorry, that allows for better storage. And now, next, I want to take a look at the nucleolus. The, maybe, the nucleolus is the central portion of the nucleus. It is where RNA is created, specifically rRNA. This is not a membrane-bound structure. It is just the portion that is very dense because of all the RNA that is being created inside of there. And next, maybe, nope. Maybe. We're going to move on. Zoom out. Here we go. We're going to move on to the cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton is located all around the cell, and it is the main support structure of the cell. I'm going to have you take a look here at the cell membrane portion. Now, I want you to notice how this is attached to the cell membrane. This gives the cell membrane some rigidity. As we talked about before, the cell membrane is somewhat fluid, but it also needs to be rigid to maintain shape and protect the organelles inside. Turning around, I want you to take a look at the or how the cytoskeleton attaches to the nucleus. This is how it supports all the organelles and keeping them in their specific place. And now we're going to take a look at the ribosome, which is right in front of us. Ribosomes are the protein synthesizing structures. There are actually two rRNA portions. In eukaryotes, the larger 
red portion is 60S and the smaller portion is 40S. I want you to notice the green flat mRNA strand that is being read and then the orange chain of amino acids that is being produced or that are being combined to create a protein. Now we're going to move on to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. This is the endoplasmic reticulum that has ribosomes embedded in its membrane. This endoplasmic reticulum's function is to create and package proteins mainly that are going to be embedded in the cell membrane or other membrane bound structures throughout the cell. Next we're going to move over to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. This endoplasmic reticulum is in charge of synthesizing other substances such as lipids, phospholipids, and steroids. And then once these items are synthesized, they are sent to the Golgi body, which I'm going to show you next. Zoom out here and no, other way, other way, up, up, there we go, up, hey, the Golgi body, also known as the Golgi apparatus. This organelle receives synthesized items and packages them, then pinches itself off and then sends it to other parts of the cell. I want you to notice the little pinch portion right there, that that is a completely packaged part. And now we're going to take a look at the proximity. Notice the proximity between the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi body. This is so that it is a short distance for synthesized things to be sent. Now we're going to take a look at the, maybe zoom in a little bit more, the vacuole. There it is. This small little organelle is a basically a portion of the Golgi body. It is a phospholipid bilayer transport unit that travels along the cytoskeleton. Notice the proximity to the cytoskeleton. This is used to transport things around the cell. Next, we're going to take a look at the lysozymes. Lysozymes are also vesicles like vacuoles, however, they are filled with hydrolases. Hydrolases are enzymes which are used to break down basically any substance inside the cell. Lysozymes are a cell's defense system. They can attack invading microbes by engulfing them like white blood cells. They also are able to repair the cell membrane by fusing with it and repairing the hole that might be there. Next, we are going to take a look at the mitochondria. We're going to zoom out here and click on the mitochondria. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. It converts sugar to ATP in a process known as oxidative phosphorylation. I want you to note the two different membranes of the mitochondria. The outer membrane just looks like a normal cell membrane. However, the inner membrane has, in, has folds to increase the surface area for oxidative phosphorylation. Mitochondria have their own DNA and divide on their own. They do not divide with the cell during mitotic cell division. The current theory of where mitochondria came from is that they were originally their own organisms and were engulfed by a eukaryotic cell and became part of the cell process. And finally, we are going to take a look at centrioles. Centrioles are made of microtubules like the cytoskeleton, and they form mitotic spindles, which are used to separate replicated DNA into the mother and daughter cells during mitosis. And thank you all for joining me. I hope you enjoy the APSO world. Make sure you check it out and explore it. And I hope you all have a great day. Bye. And action. How could I have hit the wrong button? I just talked for 30 minutes and hit, didn't hit record or on the tablet. Ah! So, I just hit the power strip on my computer. I just lost everything. Well, two hours down the drain, let's start again. Oh, oh, wait, 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 recover. Yes, recover. Woo! Test, 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 test,